The transition between being a student and being out in the workforce can be a very challenging one for people. Because as a student, you have, for the most part, a set path for you to follow. Here's what you need to do to pass the class. Here's what you need to do to graduate. However, when we do graduate and we get out in the workforce, things change. And far too often, recent graduates find they aren't enjoying the work that they are doing and they don't know what they would do instead of that current job that they are in. On top of this, we are really good at acting like we have things figured out when we actually have nothing figured out. You know, we, we always try and make it look like we know what we're doing, like we're making money, like we're better than the person next to us. And I was thinking about how our appearance often doesn't match reality when I was watching a documentary recently. So it was about luxury cars in Miami. If you've ever been to Miami, you know that there's a lot of really nice cars driving around and there's an entire black market devoted to renting out these cars so people for a few hours can look like there's someone that they're not and people will treat them differently than how they would normally treat them. At the end of the interview, they were talking to one of these guys who rents out these cars and the renter is telling them, you know, it's all a facade. People just do this to make it look like there's someone that they're not. And the interviewer said to him, okay, well, if we strip away the money, we strip away the car, who are you really? And he got pretty quiet and eventually he said, you know what, I'm a nobody that wants to be a somebody. How often do we act like that? We feel like we're a nobody who is trying to be as somebody by the way we act on social media, by the things we say to other people, when in reality, we are miserable. Let's just admit we don't have things figured out. Let's stop playing this game where we're always killing it, we're always doing great, nothing in our life is bad, everything is perfect. Let's admit that we don't enjoy the job we're in. Let's admit that we are looking for something else, but we don't know what that thing exactly is. Because when we admit that, that is where we can start the journey to figure out what we were meant to be. What is our dream? How can we make a difference in the world? As a Christian, I believe that God has put each one of us on this earth for a reason, for a purpose, and he has given us unique gifts and talents for each individual. And if you don't believe me, just look at science. Your DNA is so complex, it could fill up a book 23,000 pages long, and each page says something uniquely about you. I don't think that's an accident. I think you are here for a reason. In fact, I think you are so unique that no one living before is like you, no one living now is like you, and no one who will come after is like you either. You might feel like you're a nobody that wants to be somebody. But when you think about the fact that God put you here for a reason, he put you on this earth in this time of history, in the part of the world that you are in for a reason, you start to realize that you are somebody. And so now it's just a matter of discovering who were you made to be? Instead of creating this false appearance of what you want to be or what you want other people to see, just figure out who were you made to be? And that's where you're gonna find your dream. So I've got a few practicals for going after this. The first practical is pulling ourselves away from this culture of comparing ourselves to other people, of putting out this outward appearance that isn't the same as the reality in our life. What I found works for me is I limit my internet access at home. So I only use email and Google Maps when I'm at home. And if I need to use the internet for anything else, I will go to a Starbucks, a public location, because I found I'm more productive there and I spend less time on social media. As a result, I compare myself less to others and I spend less time worrying about what other people are doing, what other people think of me, so I can focus on who I was made to be. The second thing we can do is start reflecting on who we were made to be. And I'm gonna give you a few questions you can use to start. The first one, is where does your mind go when you are restless? That's gonna reveal something very profound about ourselves. I know for me, where my mind goes is often I'm thinking of stories that I've read, that I've heard, stories from my own life. And that's a big reason why I'm a speaker is I love to share stories with other people and convey a message and a lesson through them. So reflect on that in your own life. A few other questions you can think of, if you went to your doctor today and he told you you had six months to live, what would you do with the next six months? What impact would you want to have? Another question you could ask, if there were no financial burdens in your life, if you had no family obligations, what would be the impact you would want to have on the world? Start reflecting on those questions because you will learn something interesting about yourself. And I'm gonna challenge you, write it down. Because when you write it down, it becomes real to you. You can go back and reflect on it. And as you journal, you will start to see trends in how you're thinking, what you're feeling, what interests you, maybe things that are bothering in your life and you need to change. I know that 
I don't like journaling necessarily, but I found I learn a lot about myself by journaling. The third thing I would suggest is find a mentor. Find someone you look up to, you respect, and start having a dialogue with them. Maybe it's simply starting at, hey, I don't like the job I'm in. I don't know what I would do otherwise. Can I talk to you about it and run ideas by you? And by there, you're starting a dialogue. You can start bouncing ideas and maybe come up with something you wouldn't on your own. If you're a little further along and you're thinking about making a big change, whether it's moving to a new city, starting a business, you can run it by this person and you can get a new perspective that can keep you from making poor decisions or can encourage you and give you that push to take the leap of faith and pursue what you were meant to do. The final thing I'm going to share with you, you are not going to discover your dream overnight. It's going to take time to reveal that to yourself. What I would encourage you to do in the meantime as you're reflecting on these questions as you're going through this process is to pursue something you want to achieve in life. Maybe it's running a 10K, maybe it's starting a YouTube channel or starting a blog, but whatever it is, pursue something that you want to achieve because when you accomplish that thing, you will build confidence in yourself and you will build a desire to go and achieve something else. When you do discover what your dream is that you want to pursue, you've already built up discipline, habits, and you've already succeeded at something and all of that can carry over into this new pursuit for your dream. I know I've shared a lot with you guys, but let's recap real quick. Let's drop the fake act. Stop pretending we have everything figured out. Admit you don't have things figured out. Instead of saying you're nobody that wants to be somebody, realize that you already are somebody. You don't have to prove it by having a nice car. You don't have to prove it on social media. You already are somebody. Figure out who that person is with the steps I shared with you. Getting away from the culture of comparison, starting to reflect on who you are, finding a mentor, and then finally pursuing something now so you can build those habits to go after your dream. And guys, you do those things, you're going to find out who you are, who you were made to be, and that's an exciting journey.